Very few people know the history of Zanzibar and the revolution that took place on 12th December 1964. It is noteworthy that Field Marshal John Gideon Okello, who was a household name in the 1960s and 1970s, has fizzled out of history books. He was the main instigator of the revolution. Who exactly is John Gideon Okello? In his self-introduction, Okello, Okello indicates that he was born on 6th October 1937 in Anino village in Alibton, in what was referred to as Lango district. He was the fifth born in a family of 13 children. He lost a brother and six sisters from different illnesses, which included malaria and pneumonia. From Anino, the family moved to Okut village where he continued to reside. During his childhood, he worked as a herdsboy, tending goats and cattle. His attempt to join the army of the King African Rifles was not allowed by the British authorities due to being underage. It has been noted that he was mesmerized by King African Rifles, soldiers returning from Second World War, and hence the desire to join the army. His mother died in 1947 during childbirth, while his father died in 1948 due to stomach ailment. Okello joined the Lebton Church Missionary Society School and later he went to Aloy Primary School. His childhood was difficult as his siblings had to be moved to different homesteads in order to be fostered by relatives. Sojun started in 1953 when on 18th December 1953 he moved to Soroti where he got a job at a local ginnery at Otuboy. Given the many grievances of the workers, he organized a strike for better pay. On 19 September 1953, he started a small business in Soroti. He also played football for the East Soroti football team, where he was a captain. Okela later moved to Mbale, where he practiced bricklaying and carpentry. In July 1954, he moved to Kisumu, where he worked in the construction industry. In October 1954, he moved to Nairobi, where he worked at a Molem glass fitting factory. He worked at a time when a state of emergency had been declared in Kenya over the Mau Mau insurgency. In February 1955, he attended evening classes at Salvation Army Landis Road, Nairobi. He later got a job as a gardener for European. He also attended many rallies organized by a Kenyan politician called Ardwin Kodek. It was in Nairobi where he had a brush with colonial authorities. He was arrested for inappropriate sexual behavior, a fact which he bitterly disputed. He was imprisoned at Kamiti Prison. From Nairobi, he moved to Mombasa, where he sought odd jobs. He had an opportunity of traveling to Malindi and Gongoni salt works for a brief period in search of green pastures. These forays were not fruitful. From Mombasa, he worked in Kwale, it was in Kwale where he got an opportunity to travel to Pemba, where he had been informed that there were many jobs in the spice plantation. On 21st June 1959, Okello and a number of persons boarded a boat in Wasinyi to travel to Pemba. He agreed on the journey through Wasinyi in order to avoid the local customs officials. While in Pemba, he worked as a painter and another education teacher. He joined the ruling Zanzibar Nationalist Party, which was the Arab-dominated party. The party was in coalition with the African-dominated Zanzibar People's Party. The, the party governed the island from 1961 to 1964 under Sultan Jamsin bin Abdallah. The first time when alarm bells were rung about the explosive situation in Zanzibar was when unrest broke during the election of 1961 when 67 persons were killed. The General Service Unit was deployed outside Kenya to deal with violence. Okello traveled to Zanzibar in 1963 
where he joined the Afro Shirazi Party. As a member of the Afro Shirazi Party, he mobilized the youth to prepare for a revolution. Okello was known for his fiery speeches, which he delivered as the leader of the Painters' Union, ostensibly to organize violent overthrow of the. He organized an informal army who were trained in the bush. Some of the trainers had served in the colonial army and police force. The army was initially armed with bows and arrows and axes before acquiring guns. They are trained to follow strict rules such as abstinence from sex, alcohol, and raw meat. Okello later revealed in his book on the revolution in Zanzibar that an attack force of 600 to 800 men was, was mobilized. The attack force gathered in the town of Zanzibar on 11th January 19. They used secret codes to get information. The force was divided into several battalions and charged with securing several targets. The major targets were Ziwani Police Station, Mazizini Prison Amare, Zanzibar Broadcasting Station, Mtooni Paramilitary Headquarters, and Kebo Wireless Station. Kelo led the attack force at Ziwani Police Barracks. Kelo's commanders attacked other targets. The police were disarmed and the army seized and his youthful supporters were provided with guns and ammunition. Among the guns were brand guns and stun guns. This was the beginning of mayhem. The Sultan of Zanzibar escaped to Mombasa first to Tanzania and later to Britain and now Oman. An estimated 10 to 20,000 Arabs, Asians and Comorans were killed or injured. The attack force carried out thousands of reps and destroyed property and looted homes. Okello was the force behind the establishment of a revolutionary council which appointed Abed Karume president and Sheikh Mohammed Aboud Rahman as foreign affairs minister. The prime minister was Abdallah Kasim Hanga. On 3rd February 1964, John Okello was behind the formation of an armed wing called Freedom Military Force, which created tension in the ruling party. The force numbered uh, 1,200 men. He was gradually sidelined from the Zanzibar ruling elite. By March 1964, the Freedom Military Army had been dissolved by the Karume administration. When Okello traveled out of the country to Uganda, he was denied entry into Zanzibar from Tanganyika. Tanganyika later deported him to Kenya and on to Uganda. Tanganyika and Zanzibar merged on April 26, 1964 to form the United Republic of Tanzania. After being ostracized for some time in East Africa, Okello went underground and was presumed to have gone to Congo. After the coup in Uganda, Wakelo resurfaced and met with Idi Amin on 17th February 1971 in a meeting which was widely covered. He complained to Idi Amin that he had been kept under surveillance by the Uganda General Service Unit and was never at peace. Amin assured him of uh, security. However, after a few months, Okello disappeared, never to be seen again. A riddle concerning his disappearance has never been solved.